Okay, so this is going to be how to draw scale diagrams. Anything in yellow is something that's my comment telling you what to do, so you don't need to copy that, but everything else you should write down when you're doing a scale diagram. Okay, so what is a scale diagram? Uh, it's something that has accurate sizes that have been reduced or enlarged by a certain amount. And you'll always see that they have a colon, the length in the drawing is the first part, and then the matching length in the real thing is the second part. So in this one, anything drawn with a length of 1, for example 1 centimetre, will have 10 centimetres in the real world. So scale diagrams are something that you're definitely going to see because you're going to get one when you rent or buy a house. So you can use them for lots of things. You can use them to figure out if uh, furniture will fit in your rooms. You can use them when you renovate your house, when you build a house. Uh, use it for paving, use it for flooring, use it for painting. So it's something that you will see when you get a house and you're going to have to deal with. So this is an example question that you might get just to draw this, di this diagram here uh, as a scale diagram. Because it might be that although the lengths are labelled here, it might not be in proportion. It's just a dodgy looking diagram. Okay. The first thing we're going to have to do is find out the lengths of the unknown sides. So this one at the top is not given, the length of that is not given in the question, so we're going to have to find out what that is. In order to do that, we can recognise that this length here is the same as this plus this. Yeah, The total length of the green bits is the same as the, the red bit. So we have that 1 metre plus this unknown length is 6. 1 metre plus unknown length is 6. So, if 1 metre plus this thing is 6, then this unknown length has to be 5, because we know that 5 plus 1 makes 6. Okay. So we can write 5 metres on our diagram, so I've written it up here. And you can write that on the original diagram that is given to you in the question. Similarly, with the other one, we want to find this length, we know that question mark plus 2 is the same as 3.5. You see that? The red length is the same as the two green lengths added together. So, we've got that 2 metres plus question mark equals 3.5. Or, the question mark is 1.5. How did I get this? I did 3.5 take away 2. And you can always check, because we know that 1.5 plus 2 should give us 3.5. And sure enough, it does. So once you've done that, you can label the 1.5 on the diagram. Good. So now we know the lengths of all the sides in our diagram, so we can actually start drawing our scale diagram. We'll start by doing this one here, just because we've got to pick a side to start with. And I'll just put a little heading, finding the scaled length of the left side. And whenever we write a scale, like this one here, the first part is on paper, so that's what you measure with your ruler, and the second part is what it would be in real life. So if this is a kitchen, the second part would be what the length is in the actual kitchen. So one centimetre is 50 centimetres. I got this from the fact that one centimetre represents 50 centimetres. Okay. With the second line here, the reason that I put the second part in metres is because our diagram's in metres. On paper, we're going to measure with a ruler, which is in centimetres, but the second part will be in metres. So I've just converted 50 centimetres into metres, and if you check your conversion chart, then you'll find that 50 centimetres is the same as 0.5 metres. Now, we want to figure out this number here. The length here is 2 metres in real life. All the measurements on your diagram will be in real life. So that goes in the second column, under here, 2 metres. Now I want to figure out what length I need to draw on paper. So to do that, I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to have to times by to get down here. The way to find that out is to just do 2 divided by 0.5, and that will give you 4. Okay. So I just did this number divided by this number, and it gave me 4. In other words, to get from this row to the next row, I have to times it by 4. 
And if I do it to one side, then I have to do it to the other side. So this side and this side will always be times by the same number. And on your calculator, you can do 1 times 4 will give you 4. And it's still in centimetres, because this was in centimetres, so the next line's in centimetres. Good, so we know that 2 metres in real life is 4 centimetres on paper. So we need to draw a line of length 4 centimetres on the paper. And you can just measure that with a ruler. Notice that I don't write 4 centimetres. I write what it is in real life, which comes from the diagram. So we label it with the real world length. There's no point with putting what it was on paper, because someone just can just measure that with a ruler. They want to know, in the real kitchen, how big is this in the actual kitchen? And it's 2 metres. Similarly, for the next one, let's say we want to find this length, because we've done the side, so we may as well do the bottom. So finding the scaled length of the bottom side, always on paper first, in real life second. One centimetre on paper is 50 centimetres in real life. These first two lines, they're going to be the same for all the conversions that you do, all the scale diagram uh, calculations that you do, for this problem anyway, because that's the scale. Okay, so the second part, this is in real life measurement. We want the real life measurement to be 6 metres, so we can put 6 metres in the real life bit. To get from 0.5 to 6, we have to times by something. And to figure out what we have to times by, we can divide. 6 divided by 0.5 gives us 12. So we times by 12. You should be able to check, because if you put in your calculator 0.5 times 12, we should get 6. We should get this next line. And if you check that, that is what you'll find. 0.5 times 12 equals 6. Okay. As I said before, on the other side, we're going to have an arrow again. And it's also going to be times by 12. There we go. To find out the length on paper, we can do 1 times 12, and that will give us this answer here, which is 12. So on paper then, I need to draw a 12 centimetre long line, and that will be along the bottom, down here. So you measure that with a ruler, and remember that you label it with the real life measurement, which is 6 metres. Okay. All of these next slides are almost identical, so you can skip ahead if you wish, but we're going to draw this line next. So we write down this, which is the same at the start of all of these problems, because it has the same scale. We're going to put the real life measurement here, which is 3.5 metres because we know that the real life measurement is going to be 3.5 metres in the actual kitchen. Then we want to figure out what we need to times by, and to do that, it's 3.5 divided by 0.5, which happens to equal 7. So I put times by 7. And again, you can always double check, 0.5 times 7 will give you 3.5 in the calculator. And that's how you can know that you're on the right track. On the other side, times we write times by 7, because it's the same, and 1 times 7 will give us this number here. Boom, which is 7. So that's 7 centimetres on paper. So just as before, we need to draw a line that is 7 centimetres on paper. And that will go up here. Do you measure it with your ruler. Make sure it's straight. Make sure it's exactly 7 centimetres. And there's our lovely measurement with this real world measurement from the diagram. Okay. So for the next slides, we can just pretty much skip through them. It's the same, exactly the same method, exactly the same method. Okay, with the last one, um, once we've got that, we don't actually need to really do the calculation for that, because it's just to join these two, yeah? There's only one length that could possibly be, just between there. So we can just finish it off. And just remember to label that length as real world measurement. There's one little part of the question that we've forgotten so far, and that's that we actually have to calculate how much this thing is going to cost. So we've drawn the diagram, tick, good, done, uh, but we still need to figure out how much it's going to cost. We're given this helpful piece of information here that it costs $800 per square meter. 
So square meters is area, so we need to figure out the area first before we can calculate the cost. Okay, this here is not a nice neat shape. It's kind of just two shapes that have been tacked together, like kind of a rectangle here that's got another rectangle smooshed onto it. So we're going to have to break it into two pieces and give them names. I've decided to split up like this, and I've decided to call this part A and this part B. Now we can find the area of each shape and just add them together. So area of A, well A is a rectangle, so its area is going to be its length times its width. Okay. Remember that this 6 meters goes all the way from end to end, so I want this 5 meters because that is the size of just this rectangle. So it's going to be 5 times 2. Yeah, 5 times 2. So the area is 10. Uh, 10 what? It needs a unit. Well, this was in meters, and this is an area, so I've got square meters is the unit. The same for B. The area of B is 1 times 3.5, because that's how high it is. And again, it needs a unit. The unit is the same, square meters. Now I've got the area of each of them. I want to find the total area of the kitchen. Yeah, because I have to build the whole kitchen, not just this little bit, or this little bit. So the total area is as simple as just adding them. So this is a compound shape. It's a shape composed of two different shapes. So you can just add the area of this one to the area of this one. And that's the total area, 13.5. Again, it needs a unit. This is square meters. We still have an answer to the question. The question asks for calculate the total cost of construction. So, it's $800 per square meter, which means I have to do $800 times the number of square meters, yeah, the area of it. The number of square meters we just said was 13.5. There are 13.5 square meters in this shape. So the total cost is 800 times 13.5, which is 10,800. And that's something you can do for all of your dollars per square meter, dollars per cubic meter. If it says dollars per square meter, then you look at how many square meters we had and times it by 800. And that will give the total cost. And that's the end of the question. Cool.